Good morning, and welcome to worship at Cala Mesa. During the pandemic, there have been many people who have developed a new ritual. When they come home from work, or they come in from the grocery store, they head straight for the washing machine and they shed their clothes and throw them in. Because they don't want to take any chance that they might spread the virus to the people in their home who they love. And yet, for many, many years, we have been dealing with something in this world that's far more dangerous than a virus. And that is sin. The sin of pride and greed and envy. The sin of criticism. And we have the opportunity to come today to a ritual that we have in the Christian church, the ritual of communion, where we're able to shed our old lives and God promises that he will wash us whiter than snow. So I invite you to sing with me now how deep the Father's love for us.
Joe Callan, Mesa Church family. We're so glad that you're joining us on the second Sabbath of 2021. We are, it's a high Sabbath for us. We are going to be celebrating communion today. And it's our tradition here at Cala Mesa that we practice open communion, where anybody that accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior can share in this wonderful uh, experience together. Parents, it's also a great chance to have a conversation with your kids about what communion means and talk about the emblems and the significance of Jesus and his sacrifice for us. So prepare for communion time just in a little bit. Some of the other things that we wanted to bring you up to speed on, uh, we are so blessed and grateful for the faithful uh, ongoing contributions to our church ministries. The way that you sacrifice to support our church and, our, and the ministries that we do both locally and around the world. We were more than able to meet the needs of our Christmas offerings this year and the rest of it, the balance being um, allocated for our Christmas uh, offering to go towards our kitchen remodel project. And all the um, details are available in the weekly email about our offerings and the status of our property building fund. And so we thank you for your faithful contributions to those ministries. On uh, January 16th, in two Sabbaths, we will be having our blood drive here in the Fellowship Hall. You can go online to reserve your appointments, and um, it'll be from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. on January 16th. And you can do appointments by calling Livestream or going to lstream.org to reserve a spot. We're so glad that you're with us today. And we invite you to prayerfully enter into our worship experience. God bless you. Good morning, boys and girls, and happy Sabbath. Today's story begins just as the Israelites, God's people, were leaving Egypt after having been slaves there for over 400 years. Do you remember how they left pretty quickly after Pharaoh let them go, they were so happy to finally be out. However, Pharaoh changed his mind and the entire Egyptian army started chasing after the Israelites until they had cornered them against the Red Sea. Can you imagine how the Israelites felt seeing the army begin to invade them, thinking they now had nowhere to go and now they were probably going to die? The Bible says that they were very afraid. Maybe some wanted to hide or run away. Maybe some wanted to fight back. So there are big and scary things happening all around us. And it's so easy for us to also want to hide or run away or even fight back. But God is so much bigger and stronger than any of the bad things that are happening around us. There's a promise that God made to the Israelites in that situation that we can remember in our current situation. And it goes like this. Don't be afraid. Stand still and see the Lord save you today. You will never see these Egyptians again after today. You will only need to remain calm. The Lord will fight for you. That is great news. God is already fighting our battles, our big scary things all around us. And all we have to do is look to God for help. God always wins. One of the coolest Psalms in the Bible, Psalm 46, can speak into moments like these big scary moments in our own lives especially when we go into panic mode and i'm going to read it for you today here it goes psalm 46 god is our protection and our strength he always helps in times of trouble so we will not be afraid if the earth shakes or if the mountains fall into the sea we will not fear even if the oceans roar and foam or if the mountains shake at the raging sea. 
There is a river which brings joy to the city of God. There is a holy place where God Most High lives. God is in that city, and so it will not be shaken. God will help her at dawn. Nations tremble and kingdoms shake. God shouts and the earth crumbles. The Lord of heaven's armies is with us. The God of Jacob is our protection. Come and see what the Lord has done. He has done amazing things on the earth. He stops wars everywhere on the earth. He breaks all bows and spears and burns up the chariots with fire. God says, be still and know that I am God. I will be praised in all the nations. I will be praised throughout the earth. The Lord of heaven's armies is with us. The God of Jacob is our protection. So friends, I hope that you can carry God's words with you everywhere you go. And remember that God is so much bigger and stronger than anything we could possibly imagine. He's in control and best of all, he always wins. Well, that's it for today. We will see you next week. Hi, I'm Terry Haney. And this take is maybe 26 or 27. So we'll see how it goes. There's a favorite story that I have in the Bible. It's an interaction between Jesus and Peter. And it occurs after Peter just spent an entire night fishing and trying to fish and not getting a single thing. Coming into shore, um, meeting Jesus. Jesus is speaking to some people and Jesus turned to him and asked him if he caught anything and it was nothing. And so Jesus turns to Peter and says, take the boat out. And at the wrong time of day, at the wrong place, drop your net and fish. So Peter didn't think that anything good would come of it, but because Jesus said it, because Jesus asked him to do it, he got in the boat and let down his nets and brought in a catch of fish that was so enormous that it was breaking the nets and he called for help. That is life with Jesus. It is the surprise, it is the unique, it's the abundance of love and grace and mercy. And for many of us, at different times in our life, it can be healing, it can be um, giving us fiscal um, help, it can be a village of people who love Jesus that support us and give us grace and mercy. This is a time in our church service where I would really love for you to dig deep in your memories and think about what God has done already for you, what he's doing for you right now, and what he promises to do for you in the future. Because his life and his gift of hope and spiritual blessings are beyond everything and anything we could ever hope for. So as you think about what you can give as an offering, not only do I want you to give of your heart and your soul, but I also want you to think about uh, monetarily what you can give to help our village, to help the conference, to help those around us, to be generous spirits, to model the abundance that God has modeled for us. Today, the offering is going to buildings uh, fund for the conference. So please be generous in that. And I thank you right now for the gifts that you're going to give. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you for showing us love beyond what we can even imagine, for revealing yourself to us, for being a God of yesterday and today and tomorrow and providing us bread for each and every day. I thank you for how you have led us in the past and how you will lead us now to be generous hearts and spirits in a world that desperately needs you. Amen.
Church family, pray with me. Loving Father, we thank you for another week. This time it was a crazy week, and we are saddened and confused, and we are thankful that you are our omnipotent Father. Nothing happens without your permission, and you are in control, and we are grateful. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior, our constant friend, Father, in a world that seems to be coming apart at times. This evening news shows that it appears to be no better, but with Jesus as our friend, with the Holy Spirit as our constant comforter, Father, we can take courage, and we're thankful for that. Thank you for our church family. Father, even though we're apart, we are together through your Holy Spirit, and we're thankful for each member. Help us to make sure that not one member feels forgotten or neglected. Certain members of our family are hurting this week, Father. Let's bring them to your already very loving heart. You're already active in their lives. Georgie, Father, uh, Barrett fell on her bike this week, and she is healing. We're thankful that your guardian angels were there and she didn't get hurt any worse. Be with Grace. Continue to bless the Kim family. We love them so much. You love them much more. And your presence, Father, make it very evident in their home. Help them to know that we love them and are thinking of them always. Be with Steve Brand. He has fallen, Father. He has a broken hip, and now he needs to heal, and he's going to do that in your presence, in your care. Bless Joanna and Father and church family. There are some that I won't mention, but please let's continue to pray for everybody in our family who is hurting. Thank you for, again, caring for us through this interesting week. We wake up every morning and we start thinking of our, our work, our jobs, our kids, our parents, everything that's so important to us. And all we can do is trust you. And so we do that. We thank you, Father, for your continued care in all, in all of our lives. We look forward to the time when someday soon, we pray, you will return the craziness of this world would end, and we will spend eternity with you. And very much importantly, we can trust you till that very time. We love you, we thank you, we trust you. Father, in Jesus' name, amen.
Which is easier? I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit how often that question influences the decisions I make. When my wife, Beamy, asks, for example, something like, what should we make for dinner? This dish or that one? I usually respond, well, which is easier? One of my New Year's resolutions, maybe yours is too, is to exercise regularly again. So I subscribe to an online on-demand exercise service. They have tons of different workout programs to choose from. And I must admit that I selected a program that was advertised as easier than most of the others. I often choose to do that which is easier. Something that's common in our household is the WYU technique. That's what I like to call it. It's a technique that I have learned to perfect. Although it wasn't hard for me to perfect because I had a good teacher in my dad who also perfected this technique. You know what I'm talking about, right? When I say W-Y-U technique. It's like when you and your spouse or maybe you and your sibling are relaxing on the couch. Maybe you are enjoying a TV show or reading a nice book and all of a sudden you get a craving for a snack or a nice cold drink. But you are really comfortable on that couch. You don't want to pause what you're watching or put down what you're reading. So you wait, hoping that your spouse or your sibling is going to eventually get up. Or if you're really sinister, you will say something like, Hey babe, did you see that piece of mail that came in for you today? I left it back on the kitchen counter for you to take a look at. It seemed really important. And then your spouse gets up to go look for it and says, Oh, it's just junk mail. Oh, really? Oh, I, I was way off. Sorry about that. But hey, while you're up, would you mind grabbing me some chips to snack on? Do you mind getting me a nice cold drink? Now, of course, I wouldn't really do something like that to my wife. Uh, but if Beamy does happen to get up, I will try to take advantage of it. And she does this just as much to me as I do it to her. But I will take advantage of that because I often choose to do that which is easier. Maybe you look for the easier choice, the easier path, like I do so often. And maybe that's not always a bad thing. I mean, life is hard enough as it is. Something we were especially reminded of in 2020. And it's not like things have started off smoothly in 2021 either. Life is hard enough. Which is why I think you and I should contemplate today that question. Which is easier? Although I invite you to contemplate it not in the way that I sometimes use that phrase to make decisions. But in the way that Jesus uses that phrase in Mark chapter 2. We are continuing our series in the Gospel of Mark that Pastor Kazar so powerfully kicked off for us last week, and we are landing today in Mark chapter 2, starting in verse 1. I'd like to read it with you. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? 
Which is easier? To say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Pretty amazing story. But did you catch that amazing moment when Jesus asks the question, Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to get up and take your mat and walk? These four friends with incredible faith have brought their friend to be healed by Jesus. But Jesus won't settle for just a simple healing of the body. He wants to heal the soul. A soul that I can only assume is even more broken than his body was because of the countless judgments he no doubt received about his condition being a result of some grave sin that he or his family had committed. The expectation of these four men who had gone to all this trouble to bring their friend before Jesus, they expect Jesus to just say, I heal you. But yet Jesus' first reply is, I forgive you. They are expecting Jesus to heal the body, but Jesus wants to hear heal on the spiritual level. They want Jesus to give uh, uh, the man a new body so he can walk. Jesus gives grace so that he can truly live. As Jesus chooses to bring healing on this level, the level of the heart, the spiritual level, the Pharisees start to grumble in their minds. This is blasphemy, they say. Only God can forgive sins. The Pharisees learn an important lesson in this moment. Don't think something that you don't want Jesus to hear. And their grumbling hearts lead Jesus to ask that incredible question. Which is easier? Jesus asks. To tell this paralyzed man you are forgiven? Or to tell him, stand up, take your mat and walk? Which is easier? Jesus asks. I would like to read to you some thoughts about this question. That question that Jesus asks from Max Lucado's book entitled, He Still Moves Stones. He says this. You answer that question. Which is easier for Jesus? To forgive a soul or heal a body? Which caused Jesus less pain, providing this man with health or providing this man with heaven? To heal the man's body took a simple command. To forgive the man's sin took Jesus' blood. The first was done in the house of friends, the second on a hill with thieves. One took a word, the other took his body. One took a moment, the other took his life, which was easier. Jesus already knows the road to grace is not an easy one. He already knows the costly price of forgiveness, but he offers it anyway. This past year has been anything but easy. I know many of you, family, are suffering through so much right now. But today we have gathered together at the supper table of our Lord to celebrate how Jesus didn't choose what was easier. Rather, he willingly hung on a tool of torture as a substitution for every mistake that you and I would ever make. And because he didn't make the easy choice, we can come to him today in our brokenness and find true Healing. Healing that isn't just physical, but spiritual. That isn't just temporal, but eternal. 
as we move now into our communion service, we're going to give some time for you and your household to wash feet together. And then after about 10 minutes, we are going to partake of the emblems together. And as we move into our communion service together, my prayer is that you will sense Jesus saying those healing words to you. Your sins are forgiven.
as we now move into the part of our service where we will partake of these powerful symbols of the forgiveness that Jesus offers us. I want to invite first Pastor Ken to lead us in a blessing over the bread. Father in heaven, as we take this bread in our hands now, this emblem that represents the extent to which your love led you to go, your body broken for us, your life poured out for us. We pray, Lord, that you would bless this emblem. And just as it becomes a part of our bodies now, as we partake of it, we pray that your love and grace expressed through it might become a part of our lives as well. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul says this to the believers, For I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Now I'd like to invite Pastor Viana to lead us in a blessing over the juice. Let us pray. God, thank you so much for this symbol of blood, the blood that has been shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And we remember your sacrifice. And yet we are also so grateful because there is nothing stronger that connects us to you than your blood. So may this be a moment where we connect with you in the deepest of ways. We pray this in your name. Amen. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. I'm so grateful for the fact that Jesus was willing to not just do what was easy, but lay down his life for the forgiveness of our sins. If there was anything that ever told you that Jesus is for you, it would be that, the lengths that he went to save you and I. We're going to hear a song right now from Grace Kim about how God is for us, about how he is always with us. And may you find comfort knowing that Jesus really is for you because he was willing to do for you that which was not easy. Dear church family, thank you so much for your support and prayer. Out of my thankfulness during this short period of time in between chemo treatments, when I can have the opportunity to sing and play the piano again, I want to share the song called The Blessing. During my health journey, the greatest blessing has been to have God's presence with me, his peace and love overflowing to comfort me, and when in dark times, his face illuminating to provide for my every need. And that's what this song is about. Shine upon you and be 
gracious to you, Lord, turn his face towards you, hang in peace. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much that you are a God who is for us, that you were willing to not do what was easy so that we could be with you for eternity, so that we could find healing at the level of our souls, Lord, where it really matters. Thank you, God, that you're always with us, that you never leave us and forsake us even now, but we have that hope of being with you because of what you did for us, being with you for all eternity. Lord, thank you again for the cross and your willingness to endure it for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> 